money definitely being spent down at the Cosmopolitan, and that's where News 3's Marie Mortera is. Marie. Oh, and welcome to my party, guys. Come on in. We're up here on the 32nd floor of, as you said, the Cosmopolitan. If you recall last year's New Year's Eve party, I had quite the bash, too, at the Panorama. Let's just say we decided to change things up a little bit this year and take you to one of Las Vegas' newest hotspots, again, the Cosmopolitan. And hi, guys. I like how the boys are manning the drinks. Lots of bubbly over there, right? Uh, take a look at this suite, a wraparound suite, uh, just one bedroom. But hey, hi, Brittany. Look at this so party just getting underway everybody's just kind of lounging at this point again the view here amazing but you know what you really got to check out outside come on out and take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The fountains of the Bellagio are going off. The corrals down on the strip. Yeah, the party has definitely started. Now here at the Cosmopolitan, you know that we're gonna talk more than just the view, right? I'm gonna take you on a tour of this resort through the evening. First off, the art here. The art is very unique at this resort, and I introduce you to Jerry Misco, one of Las Vegas's own resident artists. And Really, he takes a uh, nice uh, touch to the art scene here in Las Vegas. And, of course, we have to talk about the taste of the Cosmopolitan. DOCG celebrity chef Scott Conan also takes me on a tour of his uh, vision of Las Vegas dining. And last but not least, we can't talk about the Cosmopolitan without the Cosmopolitan cocktail. Great way to toast the new year. And speaking of toast, guys, let's head back inside because I think I see a nice bottle of bubbly chilling here on the table. Well, are we going to get this open? Yeah? Yeah, oh, we'll get it open. All right. Well, that's how you get the party started here. Come on over. I can't. Lady can't do this alone, right? <laughs> there we go. And that is going to be the story here at the Cosmopolitan tonight. I hope you guys have a great time joining me here at my party. In the meantime, back to you, Jim and Jessica there at Caesars. All right, Marie, you look fantastic, and what a gig she's got tonight. I know, I'm jealous. Now we're looking ahead to our future. Marie Mortera is going to introduce us to the Cosmopolitan's new headliner. I'm Jerry Misco, and I'm the artist in residence here at the Cosmopolitan and the P3 studio. Um, I'm a painter. I focus on images of Las Vegas. Born and raised in Las Vegas, and uh, I've just always had a fascination and love for the, the architecture and the signs and the, the imagery that, that makes up what Las Vegas is. The paints that feel like they hum a little bit, like neon hums makes that great sound, so I want them to feel like they're buzzing in the back of your brain a little bit. There's also been a little resurgence of the classic neon sign, and the old sign shops are having some, some, uh, some luck with people building new things and, and wanting that old school feel and uh, that lost art, not really lost art, but a very you know, fading art of, of bending neon. It's part of the tradition of Las Vegas since the get-go and it's nice to see people appreciating that again. Now, a lot of times people, you know, it's right here in this public space, it's a big aquarium, so people come in, they say hi, they want to talk about the art, they want to engage with you know, the artist or the art itself and just hang out and talk to them. So don't get as much work done in an eight-hour period as I would, but. I meet a lot of people and I get to, and that's part of this residency is not just me here making art, cranking things up, being a studio. It's me being here engaging with the people coming through, whether they be locals or tourists or whoever, but it's another part of the experience of coming coming here is the, the artist in residency program. Good. All right, I'm gonna walk away. All right, and here is the finished piece. Just took a snapshot of it, of, of it, I should say, at the P3 Studios. It is for sale, although I didn't get a chance to look at the price tag. Okay, come back out here live now to our view. Again, 32 stories up here at the Cosmopolitan. Wrap around suite, and why do they call it that? Well, Bose, my friend, my photojournalist tonight, go out there and give the guys at home and gals, too, a look at this gorgeous view. You can see all the way down to McCarran. It is fantastic. Fantastic. And you know what else I can check out from up here? How about the crowd? Can you hear that noise? I'll tell you what, it feels good to be a part of America's party, especially when you got a view like this. That's the story from here. Jim and Jessica, hey, back to you guys there at Caesar Palace. Caesar's Palace. Not I think we might be able to shabby. see you. And we've got you covered. We've got crews all over town. We showed you what's happening downtown. Yep. Well, Jessica and I are here in front of Caesars Palace, kind of center strip. And then as we move south, we've got Marie Mortera at the Cosmopolitan. The Cosmopolitan opened this year and has been a smash hit success all over the world. It has gotten reviews by the 
Today Show, USA Today, all these travel magazines everywhere. One of the biggest draws is the food, I would say. The restaurants are amazing. The Cosmopolitan has a celebrity chef there that is really unlike any other chef. His name is Scott Conant, and Marie Mortera had a chance to sit down with him earlier this week, and she wants to introduce you to Scott Conant. We're in the kitchen of DOCG, which stands for? Demonazione Origina Controllata Garantita, which is essentially a stamp of quality with different products that are coming out of Italy. Exactly what you can find here, says chef and owner Scott Conant. He shares with us dishes that show that. Of course, a pasta, a cavatelli in this case, and a few New York strip steaks, which he cooks in a specific way. We season heavily with salt. I really like a lot of salt on my red meat. And is that so, olive oil on there too? That's olive oil and we just let it marinate like this, so New York Strip, nice and thick. Nice amount of salt all the way around. And then we'll just very simply put it on the grill to get some good flavor developed. Just like that? Just like that. And then we'll finish it in the oven. That's 350 degrees in the oven. Now onto the pasta, but a critical step before. And this is really important. Salting the water. No, it is the most important thing with pasta cookery. Well done. The Give most. me five. The most, yes. I have opinions on pasta cooking. Okay. As you can imagine. I, I can imagine. Um, the pasta water itself has to taste like broth. Semolina uh, cavatelli. So we make all this stuff in-house. Um, just made with semolina and water, very simple, a little bit of olive oil. And then I have a sausage, porcini mushroom and black olive sauce that we're gonna mix it together with. You see it's starting it's to float. Up, yeah. It's gonna, we'll let it cook a little bit more. And when it's about 90% of the way cooked, I'll put it inside the sauce and then we'll finish it on the fire so that it finishes cooking directly in that pan. There we go. We just top it with a little bit of ricotta huh. on top. Oh, that's nice. You just let it melt all over, huh? Just really, and then you get like a little in every bite. Such a nice little touch. Extra virgin olive oil again. A little sprinkle of cheese. Good to go. Mm. That's really good. That's good, right? A little bit of spice, huh? You put that red pepper in there? A little bit of spice. Is it too spicy? No, it's good. I like it. It's a nice backdrop of flavor, I think. Nuance. We're nuancing flavors here at DOCG. That's what we're doing. So again, I think it's, it's really important when we slow roast this to, to base this meat, because all this is flavor. Just, mm. just smell that. I mean, it smells, it smells good, right? It's really good. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. Mm glass. You can get one. Oh, that is a lot of meat. I'm like I'm kind of working, though. Oh, well. So I'm not drinking like it's a lot. Okay, so obviously a very delicious way to end that story. But you know what's really, really sweet? That view. Bose, you mind taking the, uh, the folks outside and showing them what we are looking at here? Again, 32nd floor of the Cosmopolitan. Uh, beautiful view out there. America's party definitely rocking tonight. And you can hear the crowd. You can really feel that excitement. And you know what? We are still minutes away from midnight. I know, a little bit less than an hour to go, and everybody is getting ramped up, and that includes us here. So thank you guys so much for joining us here at our party for now. We'll be checking in with you a little bit. We're talking drinks, more drinks the next time. So you'll have to be here for that. All right, so we've seen the food at the Cosmopolitan. We've met celebrity chefs. But now we want to talk about the best drinks. We all, we've all heard of a Cosmopolitan as a drink. Of course, Sex and the City made that really famous. Yes. You that was Carrie's drink of choice. That was. You figure, I don't know why I know that, but I do. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. You figure the Cosmo would make a good Cosmo. And Marie Mortera is hanging out in just a, a, a suite with a killer view. And she's been uh, bringing us some food ideas. And now we're focusing on the cocktails, Marie. And 
and of course, as you said, the Cosmopolitan would not be the Cosmopolitan without its unique Cosmopolitan cocktail. A little bit more on the recipe and how uh, one of the mixologists here mixes it up, but I want to give you guys a sneak peek, or a peek, I should say, at the Stevie Wonder concert going on as we speak. You can actually check it out uh, through the, or at the marquee, and Bose, I don't know if you can shoot right here through the glass of the balcony, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the concert going on right now here at the Cosmopolitan. Pretty cool, huh? And the crowd down there must be loving it because what a way to celebrate New Year's with, of course, 300,000 of your friends and a great concert at the same time. And of course, it wouldn't be out a party without the Primo cocktail. And here at the Cosmopolitan, of course, that would be the Cosmopolitan. So check this out. I'm here with Kristen Schaefer, the Cosmopolitan mixologist. And of course, when you come to the Cosmopolitan, I think of the Cosmopolitan cocktail. So what goes in the drink? And is that a simple enough question or a little more complicated than that? Well, here at the Cosmopolitan, you know, our tagline is just the right amount of wrong. So our Cosmopolitan is very different from anything that you would find in other bars. Typically, you'll find it and it's a little bit more brighter red. Ours is actually a very pale tinged pink. So mm. it's a little sexy. It's a little classy, you know, and you just feel very elegant walking around with this cocktail. The first thing that we always use is fresh lemon juice. Every cocktail in the Cosmopolitan is made with fresh lemon, fresh lime. We don't use any, any bottled product here. Okay, so we're going to start with a half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Okay, so half an ounce of French, fresh lemon juice. So the secret to our Cosmopolitan is actually instead of using red cranberry juice, we use white cranberry juice. Ooh. White cranberry juice brings a little bit less acid to the cocktail and makes it a little bit more balanced. And it's kind of easier on your stomach. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of that. So white cranberry. And then to get that little tinge of pink that you know, you know everybody in the world knows a Cosmopolitan to be, we have a homemade cranberry syrup. It's uh, equal parts of sugar to water, and then you just get the, the cranberries in the bag, like you get at the grocery yeah. store. You just let it boil for 10 minutes, and then you pull it out, and you're left with this. Okay. So we only use a little bit, just a quarter of an ounce, okay, just to give a little tinge of pink. The most important part, obviously, the booze, right? Because, you know, it's not a cosmopolitan without booze. Uh, so we're using Salerno blood orange liqueur, three quarters of an ounce of that. There we go. And then what's also unique about our Cosmopolitan is typically bars will use a citrus flavored vodka or just a regular straight vodka, but we actually chose to use a mandarin blossom vodka. Ooh. So an ounce and a half of that. My favorite part, the shake, which is the most important part. You gotta get a good shake in. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> the sound of a party. Yeah, right? that's right. Listen Love to the it. ice. All right, so we have our cocktail nicely shaken up. Just gonna pop a glass up here. We're gonna strain that beautiful Cosmopolitan into our glass. And then for the last and final touch, we just top it with some cranberries and float them right on the top. The Cosmopolitan's Cosmopolitan. Oh, I'm sorry, did you want some? Whiter. And guess who is back? Kristen Schaefer. And we got one more drink for us before we wrap up the show. Absolutely. We're going to do a classic champagne cocktail just to bring in the New Year's Eve just right. Elegant, chic, just like the Cosmopolitan. And with that, let's go ahead and show the people at home this beautiful view. Again, we're here on the 32nd floor. And baby, is that a view or what? More of America's Party right after this. But we want to go now to uh, Marie Mortera. She's over the Cosmopolitan for us. Marie, you're going to have one last toast. Are we having like a pre-countdown toast here? Of course, a pre-countdown toast. We actually had, a, you could say, a little fireworks of our own when we popped the cork off the bottle of Moet. Yes, yes we did. We're back here with Kristen Schaefer. You met her a couple of moments ago. She's general manager of the Bond Bar and mixologist there. And tonight, final toast, the classic champagne cocktail. Real easy, you say. Keeping it simple, keeping it classic, just like we do here at the Cosmopolitan, but always fresh and always easy, right? All right, take us away. So very simply, you're just going to take a, a sugar cube and you're going to soak it 
it in some bitters, and then you're just going to top it with your champagne, and it just adds this extra layer of um, oomph and tastiness, and it's just great to toast to. So let me go ahead and pour this for you, because I'd love you to try this. And this is a classic champagne cocktail. Party in a glass, as I like to say, and that Party. sugar just makes it oh so sweet. Yes, it adds a nice little sweetness to it. And for thank sure. goodness we can end 2011 with a little bit of sweetness, yes? Absolutely. It's been a great year, let me tell you. All right, and so we add the bitters at the very end after you add uh, top off. Oh, I actually already soaked the sugar. Oh, too. oh. Yeah, it's already in there. I yeah. was so excited, didn't even notice. And so, Kristen, cheers to you. This has been a wonderful time here at the Cosmopolitan, and the party ain't over yet. Yes. No, it's not. No, no, Happy no. New Happy New Year. Cheers, Cheers to you. And mmm, yum. E. Okay.